Uh, hey, hey, thank you so much for joining us. Now, as you know, we show up every Sunday, tap in either 4 p.m. For some of you, it may be later or earlier, but we have another amazing guest. Today, we have Dr. Brandy. Brandy, how are you? I'm doing good, Tony. How are you? Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, as you may know, I love to find out just where our lives intersected online. So yes. can you remember when we bumped into each other online? Yes. So I actually, um, years ago, several years ago now, was in the process of going through a divorce. And literally um, stumbled upon your videos. I had seen you full transparency. I'd seen your videos here and there years before that. Me being superficial like I was at the time. I was like, I can't get over the accent. He way too country. But when you need some real information, your ears start to be attuned to voices that resonate with truth. And so when I was in that season of need, um, I got a lot of clarity. And at times where maybe my family or friends we're too close to the situation to be able to advise me. Uh, your videos came in clutch. And so it's been some years now. Um, everything actually worked out the best that it could, you know, considering the situation and circumstances. And um, I have a great co-parenting thing going on now. And it's been great. But your videos definitely helped to get me through. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And I'm glad that you admitted that about with the accent because I tell people that sometimes how like if somebody talked too proper I may be like I can't relate to you and correct so that's something that a lot of people try to you know ignore and act like that's not a thing but yeah. as you have you know testified to sometimes when we realize wisdom you know, it crosses all boundaries and barriers and it doesn't matter. So I'm glad that you we were able to connect online and that you, you know, tapped in, got what you needed, because now I know people need you. And that's mm -hmm. what leads me into learning. I, I want to know first where you are, where you reside and then take me into what life has you doing today. So I'm in the Carolinas. Okay. See, I'm one of those like borderline conspiracy theorists. I can't let people know my exact location. But I'm down south. Um, I actually grew up in the DMV area, went to Philly for college, stayed there for almost 20 years. So I will be 40 this year. And um, now I'm down south enjoying this great weather. So um, that's where I am and just loving being an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur for about 15 years now. So mm -hmm. um, that story is interesting. I actually uh, was working full time uh, in higher education. My oldest, who is will be 16 this year, she actually was born with some medical needs. And when I found that out, I told my employer top performance reviews like they had no issues for me. And at the time they were like, Hey, you know, what do you need? What accommodations? And I said, you know what? No daycare center will take her at six weeks at eight weeks because she has some challenges. You know, what can we do with the schedule? What can we do? And they was like, we can't do anything. Like we love you. We're great. They, they sent me away to a cheers and gifts. But at the time it was really unheard of to work remote or have that adaptive schedule. And that's what thrusted me into entrepreneurship. That's when I said I will never rely 100% on my earnings from any other entity. And, and it's been 15 years up and down roller coasters, you know, ride. But um, sometimes, you know, God just throws you out the nest. And it's been a great experience. Mm, wow, that is something. And I know that's eye opening for a lot of people have that, you know, realization in the corporate life where. They're like, hey, you got to do what we need you to do. But like we say, sometimes that what seems like rejection is, yes. you know, that's God's destiny. So that's amazing. Now, you it says Dr. Brandy. So yes. is that like that's a doctorate or is it? Yes. Tell me about that. What, OK, so I have a Ph.D. Um. And I like to kind of share about 
the fact that I have a PhD through my, a little bit of my origin story, right? Because I think we see successful people, oh, they got a PhD, you know, they look very impressive, but I grew up in a single parent household. Um, my dad's Jamaican and Guyanese. My mom's, you know, African-American. So, you know, in our household, you know, Jesus and education can cure everything. Uh, and so with my mom being just she and I, she really instilled in me, you know, education is the great equalizer, get good grades, you know, follow the rules, follow the the structure and you will have a better life, you know, than me. That was what she kind of told me. And so I internalized that and became this overachiever. So I was the student government president. I was running track. I was in orchestra. Like I did everything, but I graduated from high school went up to Philly at Temple for college, you know, did the bachelor's in psychology, did the master's in organizational development, did the PhD, got that before the age of 30 and still felt empty. I still felt like everyone else thought that I was successful. My friends would introduce me as like, this is my friend Brandy, she's getting a doctorate. You know, everyone was so impressed. But at the end of the day, I felt pretty alone. I felt like a failure, you know, behind the scenes. I had the worldly accolades. I did, I played by the rules, but there was still something missing. And so I kind of went back and had that conversation with my mom. Like, yo, you said education. You said, this is what you said. What, what's up? Cause I'm not really feeling successful on the inside. And um, she pretty much was like, girl, you old enough. Yeah, you got, you got to figure out some things on your own. And so what I realized was I wasn't leading my life. You know, I was kind of doing what everyone else said would define me as being successful. And so I was the smartest failure that I knew. I was the most successful failure that I knew because I had the external superficial things, but I didn't really have the internal thing. So at that point, I kind of took a journey, went to put myself on a journey to kind of figure out what um, is the core of, you know, success. And um, the Lord had his hand on me. I don't like the, I don't want to get popped by the Lord, but he knows our character. He knows um, what type of situations and scenarios will bring us to our knees, so to speak. And so it's been a great um, journey of doing the worldly things out of an ambition, a worldly type of ambition, and now being on the other side and being able to, to still accomplish a lot you know, as an entrepreneur, but doing it um, with a foundation um, that is, you know, full and based on God. You know, I was so insecure. That's the only reason why I was overachieving, trying to prove something. I didn't know it, but I was like trying to do everything because I was very insecure. Um, and now it's just super different. It's super different um, being being on purpose and, you know, getting on your grind, but not doing it because you're trying to fill a void. So anytime anyone starts to even go down the road of saying, you got a PhD, I'm like, let's bring it all the way back because uh, that was a great indication of my ability to read and write and do homework. But uh, there was so much else that was missing at the time at that part of my journey. So, mm. yeah. Wow. And you said a mouthful and <laughs> you said it for me now nah, because I was... I was okay. I was about to say it, but okay. you said it for me, and I think that everybody needs to hear that. That even if you want to get your PhD, you still need to identify your purpose yeah. and who you are as a person. Because I found purpose before I found my PhD. Yeah. And, and now, just last night, I was looking into getting my PhD. And when I'm looking at it, I, I Google about becoming a sports psychologist because I work with NBA mm -hmm. and NCAA yes. team. And I'm like, it said it takes six to 12 years. Listen. I'm like, these people go to school that much? I'm like, you like school that much? And I'm like, and then because... I just was like, wow. I Listen, thought, a whole nerd. I'm a whole low key nerd out here. But yeah, that's, you know, that's it, impressive. It's, but how, how many years does it take? Because we know bachelor's should be four years, but now a master's, I, I've seen one, one and a half, two. Yep. 
for you personally, like if you if you're doing full time, so to speak, taking yeah. the max amount of credits you can take, how long does your did your master's take, and then how long does the PhD take? So I was in tw I was in school twelve years straight, including summers. Okay, I just attribute when you're Jamaican, you just be doing unnecessary extraness. I think doing the most with with job. And my PhD, so I did four years, I did two years for the master's, about six years for the PhD. And I actually started my PhD program six, seven months pregnant with my daughter. So they were looking at me like, is she from the work release program? Like, where is she from? Did she get to sit in and like monitor? And I was like, I'm one of you, you know? And uh, my daughter's, my daughter was due Christmas day. And I was like, I promise y'all, I, she do Christmas day. I'll be back next semester. And they were looking at me like, ma'am, sit down somewhere. And I literally, um, she was a couple of days late. So she was born New Year's Eve, January 13th, 2009. I was right in class. Like, Hey y'all. They were like, it's a, you know, so it took some time again, PhD, unless you're probably doing something like high level. My, my doctorate is in educational leadership and policy. If you can read and write, you can get through. It's not about once you're on the PhD level, it's not about how smart you are, it's all mindset. So for me, I went in already knowing I was going to be an entrepreneur. I already, is strategic. I knew I would be consulting in corporate spaces. I would be probably interacting with corporate CEOs that are maybe white males. I knew in that context that that piece of paper will have exchange value and give me a leg up. So it was fully strategic and it took everything in me not to quit. My friends, even family were like, girl, you don't need this. You know, you already popping. You already have your business going. But I'm glad I stuck it out because um, some of those kind of, and again, to me, in retrospect, I can say kind of superficial things like a PhD and certain credentials. It matters to, in certain contexts. So I use it, use it to my advantage. And without it, I definitely know there are some doors that would have closed if I didn't have it. With me being young. I'm 40. I still look about 23 and a half. I think, you know what I mean? I still feel like I look young. I might be, a, I'm like 120 pounds soaking wet. So at, imagine 15 years ago, you know what I mean? I would not have gotten any respect, but that little doctor, Dr. Brandy, that got me into a lot of spaces and jump started my entrepreneurial career. So it was great. Mm. Yeah. You know what? You said it because people will judge you. They will judge you and black don't crack. So listen, you, you know, look your age. So you need that because I could imagine like, okay, 10 years ago and I, my wife, you know, she is Jamaican and both her parents are Jamaican and yeah. just the, the food you eat different too. Jamaican yeah. don't eat a lot of fried food. Yeah, and I remember being with my wife in the mall, and somebody, a lady, came up and said, "Are you all right?" They thought she was sixteen. Stop. They, they thought I was like thirty. <laughs> my problem was twenty five at the time or something. They thought I was thirty something and thought she was sixteen. I said, "What?" Listen, you should see me and my kids. They be like, "Where's the adult for y'all?" <laughs> I'm like, "I'm the adult." Like it's awkward because my daughter, she's fifteen. She's bigger than me right now. So I understand wow. the struggle. Yes. So, yep. So tell us about, you know, the work that you're doing. Like what is yes. your work, your purpose work? Uh, tell me about that. Yeah. So when I launched out into entrepreneurship, because out of, out of obligation, because my daughter had some special needs early on, I went to my advisor at the time, one of my academic advisors, and I said, hey, I want to just jump into like this consulting thing. I love it. I'm a systems thinker. I like to think of the end and reverse engineer to the to the beginning. And like I'm down. And he pretty much looked at me and said, you're 23 years old. You don't even have enough work experience. You know, at the time, the model for corporate consulting was you work for 30, 40 years, retire and then become a consultant. So he was like, ma'am. So I said, okay, well, what am I going to do? Because I think this is really my passion. He said, you're a great communicator. He said, you do some of the best presentations that we have in class. He said, start by doing workshops. And so I started off actually doing professional development workshops for um, educators that needed like certain amount of continuing ed credits every year. And I remember in one of those workshops, one of the attendees said, hey, my husband works for ABC company. It was a corporation. 
I think it would be great to help them out because they're having trouble with their um, emerging leaders, which is what before the term millennial was out. You know, with their emerging leaders, their young professionals, I think it would be great to help them out. Do you have any content for that? I was like, I do. Figured out the content on the back end. And that was my first, um, you know, gig and contract going into corporate. And so what I started doing, and this is why I love the Lord, because it was right around that time when all of the buzz started with the millennials in the workplace and this generation, what are we going to do with them? So I wound up kind of dubbing myself as the millennial expert. I'm the millennial whisperer. If you want to figure out how to help your employees or whatever, call Brandy. I wasn't even, didn't even finish my PhD at the time. So it wasn't Dr. Brandy. And I was, I really wanted to start a consulting firm, but I had no money. Do you hear me? No money, no startup costs, no venture capital, no family with money. I tell people I didn't bootstrap. I flip-flop strapped because I had nothing and so what I did was I said, if I can book speaking engagements, get the cash from that, I can cash flow and try to build my company. I actually accidentally grew a consulting and speaking career independently. And so over a couple of years, I started speaking about 40, 50 times a year. Um, my clients are Google, Comcast, Salesforce, the federal government, the Calm, Calm app, if you heard of the, the app Calm, anything you could think of, TD Bank, I've worked with them over the years. And so once I got some traction, I said, okay, now how can I scale, right? And you know this, Tony, you're an entrepreneur, so I already know you, like some things you want to have your hands in and you want to do and you need to do and other things, it's great to maybe build a small team. And um, I launched what is now known as millennial ventures. And so we have, we launched startups and we believe that we're helping the world and individuals take on the enemies of our future, which are mental health, which are our economics. We have to be able to make money. We have to be able to learn, especially our youth, our young people, how to generate your own income. And the third area is really leadership. You know, I believe we're in a, a true leadership crisis and with millennials being old enough to be leaders now in the workforce, taking over for baby boomers, um, our goal is to launch one of the number one leadership development firms, you know, for the for the new wave, for the new wave. So that's what we we do. Um, every once in a while, we have a project that doesn't hit. So we take it out back after maybe nine months or a year, shoot it out back and start again. But um, it's, it's a great opportunity to, um, to help the world, you know, through a, through a system, when you have a business, you're able to touch more people, not just me, but, um, in a greater way. So that, that's what entrepreneurship looks like for me, for me right now. Mm. And now do you now what about like one-on-one -on -one or, you know, like our viewers, do you have anything for that? Absolutely. So, you know, here's the thing, this is what I struggled with as just a woman growing up trying to find myself as an entrepreneur was and, and I know some people listening are going to be able to resonate I was always I always had the feeling that like I should be further along right now I'm I'm way too smart like I'm I'm low-key sweet in some air like I'm legit in some areas but I'm really not hitting my potential and so what I what I started to do was an audit for myself to say what areas are you lacking in? And as I got, you know, biblically literate, okay, because I was one of those people who grew up in the church, but I was listening to, you know, SWV and R. Kelly throughout the week. And, you know, even though I was there on Sundays, that's the kind of household that I kind of grew up in. But once I got biblically literate, I understood the principle of fruitfulness. And if there's any area in your life that is not fruitful, then maybe that's an indication that something's out of alignment. And so what I realized was that in some areas of my life, like in business, kill it. I'm good. Academics, I'm, I'm doing amazing. I can, I can study with the best of them, you know, crank out papers, whatever. But in other areas like finance, I was, I'm solid on that, but still could improve my personal development, character, things like that. I looked at it as a seed growing to, to bear fruit. And I realized that in some areas I was in seed form, I was buried in the soil, but maybe not deep enough. 
So nothing could take root. I didn't have full commitment to certain things, you know, in my life. Other areas, I was, I was solid, you know, sown deep in the soil, but I was in the wrong environment. Like now I'm a low key homesteader a little bit. Like I need to grow my own food because I don't know what's going on with the FDA. So I'm out there in the garden now. And I realize there are certain things they just won't grow in the heat that we have right now. There are certain things that thrive in the winter. Them berries and that lettuce and that kale, they love, you know, on freezing temperatures is nothing to them. So for me, there were some areas where I was firmly planted. I was firmly committed, but it was the wrong environment for me. And then I realized I wasn't able to thrive, right? Other areas I was growing, I was doing okay, but maybe I wasn't, you know, the pruning wasn't there. Meaning you have to let some things go, let some people go in order to really grow. Right now, when I go in my garden, there's some things that actually um, that I grow that unless I clip them leaves off, you know, they're not going to get to that length. So I just say all that to say, you know, everything that I'm doing as an entrepreneur, low key, I created for myself. And so for anyone that's listening, that's thinking, hey, you know, I really need to step up my um, spiritual um, fortitude, you know, my my biblical um, literacy. I have a community called Rare Not Relevant, specifically for, for women, you know, um, that are interested in that. Uh, if anyone's thinking about, hey, leadership, corporate, yo, I, I know I can climb up the ladder, but I want to do it in a way that doesn't kill me in the process. You know, we have our leadership development network. So um, what I actually did was I'm on the Dr. Brandy website, um, drbrandy.com backslash Tony. The links will be there for anyone and whatever their need is for sure. Um, they'll be able to click back out. Some stuff will be free, coupon codes or whatever. Um, because I know folks' wheels are probably turning, listening to me going, wait a minute, I'm trying to connect with sis, you know, see what, what she's on, what resources is she using to continue to sustain, you know, success the right way. I'll make sure that that's available for sure. Awesome. And you yeah. say it is drbrandy.com backslash Tony. Yes. Um, yes. So now if you're watching this, look in the description box, you can click the link. Easy. Now on that page, will they be able to like send a contact form, like an email or anything yeah. like that? Or do they need to click to the contact page? Well, they can, they'll be able to, my information will be right there. So if they want to get, you know, not my team or anything, it'll be directly to me. And then if there's any specific resources, you know, that they need as described, they can click and go to those um, websites, which, which are all launched by us by, uh, at Millennial Ventures. Oh, yep. Awesome. And and like what you said, that is beautiful because you can work with the corporate companies and we have viewers who have companies with staff and things of that nature. But you also can work with individuals and have resources helping them find their purpose and kind of set their yeah. marks and create their strategy and plan. So yeah. that's amazing. And what do you see? you know, going forward, are you doing what you've been called to do and you want to stay here? Or is there something else you're thinking about or working yeah. on? Okay. So I'm not sure if you can resonate, Tony. I think you can. I got ideas for days. Do you hear me? Like yeah. I have to restrain myself sometimes because I, I, if I could just sell ideas, like, I don't know if that's a thing I would do that. So one of the things I'm super excited that we're actually like about to launch. And matter of fact, I'll make sure we have um, a coupon code, you know, for all the um, blessed business tribe and just everyone who follows Tony. But it's uh, taking me back to my psychology days. So mental wellness is important. Mental health is important. I don't care how much you hustle because I've, I've done it in business to try to make money, to try to be in a PA, get a PhD or education or whatever. Your mental wellness and your mental health is important. You know, our soul is our mind, will, and our emotions. And what I found is a lot of things that maybe um, slowed me down on, on my journey had to do with my mental health, my mental wellness. Going through a divorce was super challenging, you know, with managing the kids. What? You know, running multiple companies. It's team too much. And so what I found was, that that mental health piece was like my secret weapon 
to, to sustaining success. And so we're, we're actually launching something literally right now. It's called Live Social. It's about living socially well and healthy. And we have these wellness sprints. They're 14-day wellness sprints and based on certain topics, right? So I created something called post-traumatic job disorder. Like when you had that horrible job and you're like, bruh, you know, uh, we have resources on there, um, mental wellness resources for athletes and for family relationships, um, even little things like um, communicating without cursing, right? You talk a lot about hey, how you want your speech, you know, your entire being to really represent um, the faith, right. And be pure and be holy. So those are little things. So we literally created these wellness sprints, just 14 days. What's one little thing you can do every day. It's not quite committing to therapy, right? It's not quite an app where you're just like, do, do, do. It's right in the pocket, um, very accessible to the masses. We, our tagline is mental wellness for the masses. So that's where I really see, my platform growing, you know, the corporate piece that I talked about has just been for me to leverage the connections, to get in a room, to get in the building. But everything we do is really accessible to the average professional, you know, the individual in terms of the companies that we launch and things like that. And so, but this mental wellness piece, I think is going to be great. Too many of us um, our young people, even students. I used to teach, um, be a professor at Wharton. I used to be a lecturer at Wharton, the number one business school in the world. Them kids were so smart. The students, it was ridiculous to me how smart they were. But the mental wellness piece wasn't there. They were stressed out. I mean, to the point of being ill. I used to work myself every year, December, I'm getting sick in the emergency room. Years ago. Every year, like clockwork. Why? I'm doing too much. And so that's really where I, I believe is, is the new wave as we go into the future of work, as we go into um, technology expanding and things of that nature. We're really going to need resources to help us kind of navigate this unknown world um, in a way where our mental health isn't, isn't damaged. So that's what I think is the next move. And it's coming. It's here. And I'm going to be working hard to really share that. So for our community, we need to make sure we have those mental wellness resources. So I'll make sure that that's available um, and people can get a free um, wellness sprint kit and um, they'll see the, the code on there. Most likely will be Tony so that they can take advantage. That's amazing. That is amazing. And I feel you on the million ideas. And it's a beautiful thing because I know a lot of people will also be coming to you with their million ideas, but when you know what it feels like to have all those ideas, it helps you kind of pinpoint somebody else's strength. Yes. So that's amazing. Yes. And yes. now drbrandy.com, that's just the general site. So for yes. people who want to go just see your site, see the yes. presentation, read about you, yes. click the link in the bio. You'll also see the link with all the special things for everybody in our tribe. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Brandy, I thank you so much just for stopping by, joining us. I'm excited for you. I definitely probably would be needing to hire you to be my <laughs> uh, consultant on my, got you. Uh, my PhD. <laughs> yep, and I got you. So thank you so much. And to everyone watching, please make sure you hit the like button, share it with a friend or family member. And join us next Sunday. Thank y'all. God bless you. Mm -hmm.